that free holiday was not the five star I'm used to. So hard looking, good all the time. Oh, I didn't catch you there. Hi, right, yes, yes, I'm an influencer. And you are? Hello there guys and welcome to The Break. My name is Patricia Bright and we're over here giving you the tools and resources to learn, grow, navigate life like a boss and make money moves in the process. I hope you are doing well. So yes, yes, I am in the category of influencer. A lot of influencers, of course, rarely share about how much money they make. And I know that talking about money is considered, you know, a taboo subject, which is probably why I have a channel where I talk about a lot of money. <laughs> but when you see the Lambos, the Cartier rings, new houses, and the amazing holidays, you know they are not struggling to put meals on the damn table, no matter how relatable they try to be. It's undeniable that this is a multi-million, multi-billion dollar business when it comes to the world of advertising. When you hear about influencers being paid a million pounds a post, you hear about people with 40, 50,000 followers making average salaries every single year. I know that there's a lot of people who wanna know how this world works even more and yes, Auntie Pat has arrived to give you some of those details. So we're gonna get into it. The world of influencer money. Okay, so the world of influencers have always existed. There was Marilyn Monroe, there were presidents, there were footballers, there were artists. And I know there's a lot of people who have criticisms and thoughts around it, but influencer to me is not necessarily a dirty word. And when it comes to being an influencer, it's all about having an audience who are interested in what you may be talking about. You you have the gaming industry and you have people like PewDiePie and at KSI. You also have people who stand up for great causes such as Greta Thunberg and people who are also campaigning for the rights of marginalized communities. And then you have the beauty gurus and the fashion influencers of the world. And yes, you see faces such as James Charles, you see Kylie Jenner, you see Jackie Ayina, you see people like myself potentially. And yes, we are influential in a way. And influencer is all about an ability to connect with an audience by sharing a story. And actually what I found about being within the world of an influencer is about people connecting with you versus a character, which is what actors were able to do. <laughs> Now, before I go forward, I think it's important to go backward. Facebook launched in 2004, YouTube in 2005, and Twitter in 2006. Now, in the early days, the people who were considered influential were the superstars, the people that were over there that will never see Leonardo DiCaprio, I still love you. Titanic changed my life. But yeah, those are the people that were influential. They were paid millions of pounds, millions of dollars to wear a dress and be packed somewhere as we all read what was going on in Hello Magazine or maybe the Daily Mail. You would watch movies and there'd be a random integration of someone picking up a Diet Coke and drinking it like passionately where you could really see the logo. That was the world of advertising and marketing back then. So with the social media platforms, people like myself and obviously people who are much bigger than me, who were consistently, passionately communicating with an audience, started to get a following. Where the eyes and attention goes, the dollars started to flow. Not that this happened straight away, it did take time. However, it also took investment. And so I really wanted to explore how much those costs look like when it comes to being an influencer. Back in my day, phones were not what they were. And as I started creating on the internet, I didn't really know what I was doing. There was a time where a lot of people just used their webcams and their computers, and those ran from anywhere from 800 pounds to 1,200. And like one of the biggest investments I made my, for myself was buying a Mac computer. That was back in the day. However, one of the things that was one of the main investments that I spent on when I first started was my camera 
equipment. So I started off with a point and shoot and on the market you can get something like a G7X. These are around 540 pounds. It's one of my favorite like point and shoot, go around vloggy type cameras. And then one of the cheaper DSLRs from Canon that I think is really valuable is an ATD. It has a great flip screen and that costs around 1,000 pounds. But when I started to invest even further into my equipment, I went for multiple Canons. I've had the 5D Mark one, two, three, and now I have the 5D Mark IV. I spent three and a half thousand on my D Mark IV, and I also know that I spent 2,000 and 2,000 for my other cameras. In total, I've definitely spent over 10,000 on camera equipment. Now, I have, you know, a setup like this, as you can see, it's dramatic, there's lights and all that stuff, and that isn't always essential. Nowadays, people also use their phones. Now, a Google Pixel with a great camera can set you back around 599 pounds as well as the iPhones that are really getting into the thousands but are also great quality. Now one thing I should add is when it comes to buying the cameras it's not just about the body it's about the lenses and I did not know that and I remember spending money on really expensive equipment I got my Canon you know 5D I didn't recognize that it didn't come with a lens for me to buy my 35 to 17 mil lens was circa maybe 1,500 pounds. My 50 mil lens was another 1,000 pounds. I have 85 mil lens. I have a number of different lenses. Ooh, and that price has racked up. I also spent over 3,000 pounds on my lighting. I have the Kino Flows, which I had shipped from America because you don't have them here. I spent 3,000 pounds on an entire kit of light lighting. So actually if I add up my camera equipment, it's probably in my lifetime cost at least 20,000 pounds. Yes, it was definitely investment. However, what I will say personally is that I didn't spend all that money straight away. Every time I received the YouTube check, I usually spent it on upgrading my equipment. Now, I would also talk about mics because sound is deemed more important actually than what things look like. And so I have Rode mics. Now, these are actually a bit more affordable. They are anywhere from 120 pounds to a 150 pounds. There's also mics such as the Yeti mic that are great for podcasting and have beautiful clear sultry audio if you can't afford a really fancy camera i think it's really important to at least invest in a decent mic and if i talk about the other miscellaneous items you know i have memory cards galore like 64 gig 32 gig these set me back 30 pounds here 30 pounds there 40 pounds here yes they are investment they do break as well if they get misused but again when it's come to equipment i would just give this a round figure of around twenty thousand pounds but a beginner stage it really shouldn't cost more than two thousand now when it comes to editing that is where the magic happens how does someone look like going from a three and a half to looking like 11.2 it's not maybelline it's photoshop and photoshop costs money as a YouTuber, I create videos and I of course have software that I use to be able to edit as well. Back into the, the day, you know, back in the day, my day, that should be the caption of this. But I can tell you that I could not afford the 300 pounds that it was to have Final Cut Pro X. So me and a couple of friends, you know, we went dibs and we shared and we had one code and we would use it between us. Final Cut Pro costs a 300 pound one off payment, although iMovie is free the adobe suit can cost anywhere between 240 a year plus depending on what applications you decide to have in your packages but they do also have the option of having membership now buying a decent laptop and a computer that you can edit on that can process fast enough can cost between 1000 and 2000 pounds and there's other software that i personally use to really help me be an effective business person and creator and those are things such as 
Planoly that helps me put my content out effectively. I pay for that. I pay for Lightrooms on my phone. I've paid for Facetune when I want to look extra smooth and shiny. I also pay for things such as Xero and different accounting software. But that's more of a business thing versus an influencer things. But again, most influencers are actually running a business. Now, what I didn't talk about there is when it gets into the big time creators. If you are now uh, having people work for you and having editors work for you that can go anywhere from a hundred pounds a project to 400 pounds a project depending on what you are doing and I'm telling you that Kylie Jenner does not edit her own videos she's got someone who's probably paid a pretty penny to make her look gorgeous and edit her footage amazingly so I'm gonna talk about the cost of production and props and it really does vary depending on what kind of influencer someone is I know people who spend into the hundred mark when it comes to buying you know fake flowers or food that they might use in a piece of content so people who are reviewing tech if they're spending like 10,000 on like the new phones gamers probably spend in the thousand when it comes to their computer setups multi screens desks these special chairs these special mouses and all this stuff now in my world of fashion and beauty I will tell you that my personal budget don't go crazy here is anywhere between two and four thousand pounds a month on clothing and makeup and I know that's absolutely insane <coughs> Now that I said it, I'm like, shit, I need to go look at my budget. I see it more as a business cost. I've invested a lot and I continue to invest in purchasing things to be able to give people an overview of genuinely what I think about items and products and services. Now this has slowed down and I should say I have spent up to 4,000 pounds a month. I've spent up to, I've spent more than that. Those days are over, those days are over. There are many, many influencers who spend on making sure that they look the part. And actually this is a discussion for another day because there are stories of people who have gone broke trying to look the part but not having the money to match up. And I find that as an influencer or as a creator that there's a level of investment that is required to hopefully get the results that you want but that it's not always a guarantee rent and where you create content costs money now a lot of people start off with just their room or a location or their office or something like that but inevitably i have found that most creators end up either developing their home further moving to an office or building a bespoke space when you see james charles buy a seven million dollar house but that house is equipped with a beautiful studio to ensure that he can create effectively. You know that it is an investment into his work. I personally have recognized, and it kind of burns, in the last seven years, I've probably spent over 100,000 on rent. I've had three different offices over seven years, and I've spent probably around 24,000 a year on each of those offices. My first office only cost me about 1,000 to 1,200 a month, and as I've grown teams, I've spent 2,000 a month, 3,000 a month, and then I've scaled up and scaled down depending on my needs. I inevitably needed another space for myself. And this studio that you see here, I actually spent 40,000 pounds building this studio to allow me to create as much amazing content as I possibly can. And then uh, let's talk about staff. I have had so many staff members, some who are still with me today, some who have moved on, some who have grown, some who now work in PR and different agencies and have even started their own businesses. And I'm so glad that I've been able to bring many young women mainly on my journey with me. I can think that, you know, shout out to Gio, shout out to Alice, shout out to Jumi, shout out to Erica, shout out to Lin Lydia, shout out to Amina, shout out to Linda, shout out to, to who else has worked for me? Charitza, Irini. I've had great members of staff and I've had to pay every single one of those staff a salary. So if you bear in mind that I've had over nine salaries, <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is really painful. <laughs> like the numbers are good. But also this is great for me. I love putting money into the people that work with me to actually help me be elevated even better. I've probably spent over 400,000 in my working life as an influencer 
in salaries alone. However, that isn't required for smaller influencers or people who are doing small different projects, but usually working with a photographer, you may have to pay their day rate of anywhere between 200 to 500 a day. You may then want to take on board an assistant. An assistant would probably cost around 22,000 pounds a year. And then you have to think about some of the other costs that are associated, such as management fees, PR fees, marketing fees, a publicist fees, and agency fees. These are things that come as a percentage of your total profit. But you know, I won't put these as a cost. These are costs after you started to make some money. Now, the final cost I want to talk about is the emotional cost. No, this does not have a tangible figure, but I for one can tell you as a creator, I know what I've had to give up to be able to do what I do and I've reaped the rewards. I filmed videos two days after giving birth, twice, okay? I did it and I smiled. <laughs> Now, some may say whether or not it's work or not, but footballers get millions of pounds and billions to kick a ball. People make money in so many ways doing things that some people may not deem essential. And no, this is not work that is better than what doctors and surgeons and the people who keep us safe and the roads clean. It's not better work than that. But for some reason, it's something that more people connect with and advertisers do want to partner with. I do think there's also a mental health cost when it comes to being a creator. Because as I mentioned, you put yourself out there to many, many people. There's a lot of critical opinions and many of you may be aware of the dangers of social media already. If you are someone who your job is surrounded by always being on, always being happy, always being present, always giving of yourself, it can inevitably become draining. So there's definitely a cost associated with that, that a figure cannot be put against. There's racism, there's cancellation, there's nitpicking, there's judgment, there's no guaranteed income. A lot of people can invest and invest, go broke investing and never reap the reward. And that can thus give people a lot of anxiety as well. So in conclusion, my total cost of being an influencer has been over seven hundred thousand pounds this is the first time i've ever done this calculation i cannot believe how much money i've put in to doing this i've put a lot of money into doing this however for a new starter or for someone beginning i really think that this could be done for obviously significantly less but around six thousand pounds 6400 based on my calculation which is about an investment of about 500 pounds a month now if you're someone who's smart i'm sure you could do it for even less but in reality there is no business that anybody could start an easy business or a hard business without putting up an, an initial investment and that is exactly the same as being an influencer it is a genuine business nowadays and for anyone who disagrees you might want to speak to my bank manager <laughs> the industry and the world as we know it is changing so so much and i love seeing that there are so many different opportunities when it comes to being entrepreneurial or starting your own business but again this video is really about the cost of being an influencer i am going to address some of the money that can be made as being an influencer if that is something that you want to watch you're going to want to subscribe you're going to want to subscribe okay you're going to want to give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you in my next video. Okay guys, thanks for watching, bye.